When I paint birds in watercolour that have got different colours on them, I try to make a soft, smooth transition from one colour to another. Today I've got a few different ways to show you how I do it. I get asked a lot of questions about painting in watercolour. And the other day I got an email from someone and she asked, when I paint birds that have got different colours on them and I have to butt one colour up against another, how do I do that without getting a hard, sharp edge where the two colours meet? Well, today I've got a few different ways to show you how I do it. Have a look at these Eastern Rosellas that I painted. These birds are red on the top and yellow lower down. So how do I paint that line where the two colours meet without getting a hard, defined line? It's all about soft and hard paint edges and the water on the paper. Whenever I paint, the whole time I'm painting, I'm deciding whether I need a soft edge or a hard edge in a particular place. And that will determine whether I work on wet paper or dry paper. When I painted these Eastern Rosellas, I didn't film myself. So I'm going to show you how I painted the edge where the two colours meet on another piece of watercolour paper. If you don't know the difference between a soft paint edge and a hard paint edge, I'll quickly show you here. This is Ash cold press paper that I'm painting on. I've wet one little section of it with some water. When I drop some paint onto the wet surface, I'll get soft fuzzy paint edges. So the paint moves with the water on the paper. Whereas when I paint on dry paper, the paint goes exactly where I put it. And the paint edges are hard or sharp as opposed to soft and fuzzy. If I paint on wet paper, but I take the paint right to the edge of the water line, then I'm going to get a hard paint edge again. Here I'm taking the paint right to the edge of the water line there and you can see it's giving me a hard edge because it won't go past where the water is sitting. So my water runs out to here. So I haven't taken the paint all the way to the edge there and you can see that it's giving me those soft paint edges on this side of the shape. So if I want soft edges, I must keep the paint away from the edge of the water. So let me show you how I don't paint my birds when I'm trying to merge two colours together. I'll start with the yellow paint because it's the lightest. I'm painting this on the dry paper and that needs to dry before I put the red paint on. It's dry now, so now I'll put the red paint on the top half and I paint that on the dry paper. Because I'm on the dry paper, I get those hard paint edges where the two colours meet. And that's not what I want. So that's how I don't paint my birds. So let me show you one of the ways I do paint them. I'll just draw a bird shape on quickly. And then again, I start with the yellow because it's lighter. I paint the yellow on the dry paper. Okay, I'm going to dry that with the hair dryer now. It's dry, and now I want to wet the top half with some water. So this is where the red will sit. I had to wait for the yellow to dry, otherwise the paint would have bled into this wet section that I'm wetting now. Now I've taken the water line down to the edge of the yellow. But that's not right, I can't leave it like that. Because if I do and I put the paint on, I'll get the hard paint edge again like I did when I showed you this shape here. Here I took the paint right to the edge of the water line and I ended up with that hard line and I don't want that. Instead what I need to do is take the water past the edge of the yellow. So I need to put the water on top of the yellow. So here you can see the water on the paper, it's extending past the edge of the yellow there. So now I can paint the red paint on while the paper is damp 
and where the two colours meet I should get a soft fuzzy edge rather than a hard sharp line. So that gives me that soft fuzzy edge. There is one thing I need to watch though when I paint like this. I need to make sure that I don't have a really wet brush. I've got water on my paper, I've got water in the paint, I need to make sure my brush isn't full of water too. Otherwise there'll be too much water on the paper and the paint will flow down too far. Then I'll end up in a mess and I'll have to keep wiping the bottom of the paint to stop it from flowing too far into the yellow. Here it's flowing too far down. So be aware of how wet your paper is and how much water you have in your brush and adjust those levels of moisture if it's not working for you. I have an entire video devoted to the different levels of paper wetness so have a look at that if you need help understanding it. I've made that mistake many times where the paint flows too far into the colour below. I need to mention too that I usually paint flat on a table. I rarely paint on an angle and that helps to keep my paint where I put it. As I said though, sometimes I'm a bit too eager to put the paint on the paper after I've wet it. I need to slow down a little and let the water absorb into the paper slightly. Okay, that was one way that I transitioned between two colours. Here's another way. This rose robin that I painted is pink on the top and white on the bottom. I painted this one differently so I'll show you what I did there. The photograph I used as a reference to paint this little robin was taken by a friend of mine called Roger Fance. If you have a look at the area where the pink feathers meet the white feathers you can see that there's a soft transition there. I could have painted this bird the same way I painted the rosellas. The only difference would be that there is no colour lower down because it's the white of the paper that you see. But I decided to do something different. So I'll show you what I did with this one. I've wet the body of the robin with some water and I've taken the water down further than I will take the paint down. So my paint will finish here roughly but the water I've taken to here. On goes the paint while the paper's wet. You can see at the bottom there where I've stopped the pink paint that I've got soft paint edges. Now I've dried the paper and I'll wet the bottom half with water. And here I do the same thing. I take the water into the pink feathers, which is further than I need it to go. Then while it's still wet, I can drop in my random little grey feathers here and there. And I can put some of them on the pink feathers as well. I've dried everything off and now I want to darken the pink feathers. It's nowhere near as dark as it needs to be. So this time I've only taken the water to the edge of the pink feathers. I haven't extended it down past into the white feathers. Because the paper's wet I can drop in other colours and the colours will blend together. And when I get down the bottom here where the pink feathers meet the white feathers I can use my brush and feather the paint out onto the dry paper. So I just pull it down further onto the dry paper. So instead of having a hard dramatic paint line I've got a softer jagged feather edge. The third way I can show you how I transition between two colours is with this little bird that I painted yesterday. This is a bee eater. Here on the back of the bird I had to blend the burnt sienna into the yellow. So let me show you how I did that. Here on this bee eater I'm going to wet the back all over it. So once I get water all over there, I can put my paint on top of the damp paper. I'll start with the lighter colour and I'll paint that on while the paper's damp. This is Naples yellow that I'm using. So once I've got the yellow where I want it, then I pick up the darker colour 
and I start to paint that on. And the paper is still wet, the yellow is still wet. Now as I get closer to the area where the two colours meet, I wash the paint out of my brush and I can use the brush to pull the paint down onto the yellow. So I'm using the paint that's already on the paper and I'm pulling it down into the yellow. And my brush is only slightly damp. If I need a bit more paint, I can pick up a bit more. But I have to be careful that the burnt sienna doesn't spread down too far into the yellow. So I need to make sure that I don't have excess water on my brush. There's enough water on the paper, I don't want to add to it with a really wet brush. So that water on the paper there has given me time to blend those two colours together softly and then I get that lovely soft paint edge where they meet. Here I'm painting some more of the yellow over the top. What if you've gone ahead and painted a hard edge on your painting and you don't like it and you want to try and fix it? I've got a way that might help you improve it. This fairy wren here has white and grey feathers on the lower half and a lovely dark blue plumage on the top half. So I paint the blue feathers on damp paper so that I've got time to drop other colours in before the paper dries. Like I did on the rose robin. This is indigo that I'm painting on here. And then before the indigo dries, I drop in some French ultramarine and then some Windsor Violet. Then I start to add some dark Payne's Grey along the bottom edge. Now the paint is only just dried and I'm using my damp brush to run it along the edge of the dark grey feathers. And some of that dark colour will bleed down onto the white paper. And that helps to make that hard paint line less obvious. It softens the transition between the light and the dark. That doesn't always work because my paint might have been dry for too long or I might have used a staining colour and the colour's gone deep down into the paper. But give it a try because it might help you salvage an area of your painting that you don't like. I hope to add more videos like this where I can show you problems that occur and how you might be able to fix them or at least avoid them in the first place. I hope this video was helpful. Please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and I will be back soon with another video for you. Place and that will determine whether I work on wet paper or dry paper. When I painted these rosellas, why do I keep putting my finger up? When I, when I paint multicolored birds, determine whether I work on wet paper or dry paper. Is a big swallow? The third way I can show you how to transition between two colours is with... But give it a try because it might help you salvage an area of your... an area of your... Who would have thought this would be so hard? I hope this video was helpful. Please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. And I will be back soon with another video. Another video, I was going to say. Another video.